Greetings, everyone. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing my good friend, Dr. Echeno Ilo. He's a doctor of philosophy, a graduate from the University of Glasgow. He's a coach, has a page on Facebook. He's a qualified life coach. So if, if you are needing any help, and especially after you've heard what we're talking about today, you can contact him. He's also an author of a book called The Art of True Love, The Echoes of the Soul. Uh, my name, if you don't know me, I'm Edison Ekbaji from Ancestral Essence. Uh, we are dealing with trying to change the face of African spirituality, give it uh, understanding that puts it in a more a uh, contemporary way so that it's available to everyone as originally intended. But today's not about me, it's about Dr. Hino. Now, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing very well, very good. Excellent. Thanks for having me on your show. My okay. friend, uh, it's more than my pleasure. Um, again, in truth, I did say a bit about you, and that's all the stuff you probably wouldn't want to have said, because I know you're humble in that way. Um, but how um, would you like to reintroduce yourself to cover what I haven't said? Uh, well, I think you covered um, you covered the things I've done, you know, in the recent um, the recent past. So I would just um, there's, there's there's nothing more to add. I I'm starting a coaching business. Um, I'm not sure if it's life coaching or not, but um, but it has to do with life, and I'm going to be coaching. Um, then, what else? Yeah, I finished a P I have a PhD in innovation management um, from Glasgow Caledonian University. Um, yeah, that's my recent degree. That's my fourth degree. So I have a BSc, I have an MSc. Um, in biotechnology business. I have a BSc in microbiology, then I have a postgraduate certificate in research methods, and I have a PhD in innovation management. So I've been, I, I spent, I don't know, close to 16 years or so in academics um, in the university, doing a lot of research and uh, yeah, doing a lot of good stuff in there. So maybe that's it. Part of uh, that's one very important aspect of myself. Then, on the other side of myself, um, I've been trying to um, to understand who I am and to understand my purpose um, and to live out my purpose. I spent the first um, thirty five years of my life, you know, running around in circles. Um, <laughs> you know, like uh, I won't make. Um, I don't like to use the word lost, uh, but I I wasn't on you know on a on on, on any specific journey basically. Uh, so about eight years ago, I started um, a conscious journey. Okay, yeah. it's the I, only reason why, if you don't mind, because yeah. these are things that I picked out to ask you a bit later. So we okay. want to flesh them out. So all I right. need to then, do all of it and do all my work, and then I don't have anything to do. <laughs> uh, sorry, so, when um, I I <laughs> uh, 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 right when I was growing up, I didn't really. It was very confusing when someone asked me, you know, who I am. Mm. I always separated from what I do. So, you can't do that. For me, and what well, I know, to, who to, you to, are to, is beyond what you do, because it's that what, what, do. Does what you do. But what I wanted to do, if you don't right. mind, is um, I really want to talk about the book, because the book, I think, is something which really covers what you're just trying to tell us there. The main thing I got from just reading the beginning and going through different chapters is this is your story. This is your path. This is how you overcome with spirituality, with philosophy, your um, situations that you are going through life. So in truth, um, I've taken out some chapters because this book has got 25 
beautifully written chapters. When we read them, it's like reading a bit of poetry with a bit of understanding, still telling you of the tragedy of some of the things, but putting it in such a beautiful way, you can see that this is someone that's overcome and still knows how to express it in a wonderful way. So some of the chapters that are there, things that are personal uh, interests of mine, might be interests of other people, but whenever I'm thinking of spirituality, I'm always thinking of these things, because these are the things that people don't realize are why we get into these things. <laughs> we get into these spirituality things because essentially we're trying to understand the chapters that um, um, Acheno has put in his books. There are some marvelous chapters that if you read it and the way he's wrote it, if you think his, post, his Facebook um, posts are good, you'll see that it's extended into a whole chapter of writing in such a way that you're sitting there weaving and waving in your imagination through all the words that he's used. He's a bit of a wizard with a pen, to say the least. Anyhow, um, we're also going to go into you being a YouTuber or someone who's putting out a lot of content at this moment, which is needed. And we're going to ask you a few more questions about your life later on. But the reason why I want to stay in this book is because I want people to see this and go out and get the book <laughs> and start to realize that this man is speaking from a platform of understanding. You may pick up bits and pieces from what he says, but he says so much in the book that we want you to try and get that book and then start to understand where he's coming from and then realize how we can help you in the different things that he does. Okay? So if you don't mind, I picked out 10, because I know whenever you're doing your videos, you love to use numbers. Seven this, five that, three that. <laughs> so um, the one that first struck me was right at the beginning. When you're dealing with your own path, what chapter do you start it with? This was the second one. It was start with self-love. So if you could just give us how you, one, came into that situation, and two, you know, what you was trying to convey, the message you was trying to convey in that chapter. Okay, um, I just want to um, clarify, you know, that, uh, okay, um, this, this, this book, you know, I was just with from um, from the feminine side of myself. Okay. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, well, we all have. Every human being is made up of um, DNA. Let me not get into the biology, um, but the father and the mother, as the male and the female, contributes. Um, you know, one strand of the DNA to, to make it um, the double stranded DNA that we have. So we, are, we all have um, a feminine side and we all have um, a masculine side. Of course, of course. Yeah, so this book was written from that feminine side. And I was just, I was, I, um, it's basically an encapsulation, you know, of the tragedy okay. um, of masculinity okay. that I've been through. And um, of course, it's nobody's fault, but um, that's how the world is. So when I talk about self-love, you know, mm. I never had any. So, um, <laughs> so I... Gosh, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have any at all? None at all. I'm not, yeah. I, no, of course, not, not zero. Nothing is absolute. Um, but sure. I never really... I, never lo I didn't grow up loving myself. Okay. I did not grow up um, liking my, my looks. I did not grow up liking a lot of things about myself. I don't know why. Um, but, you know, that, that was just like, that, um, that was how it was. Even recently, you know, getting used to hearing my own voice recorded, you know, sounded a bit strange to me. Uh, I knew that one. Yeah, yeah, so I know a lot of people are going through self-loading. Um, I really can't tell how we develop that thing um, where, we, um, where we judge ourselves harshly. Okay. Rather than, um, no, rather than friend, it's a big issue. It's a big, 
It's a big yeah, issue that keep everyone is ourselves down. We keep feeling that um, somebody, like, you know, like the next person is better than us. Mm. And that's why we see a lot of people running around looking for gurus and looking for that and that and that. And that's where it gets easy to manipulate um, even, you know, very large numbers of people. Of course. Uh, by selling, uh, yeah, you know, any kind of ideology. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm so I'm coming from a place, you know. So when I'm talking about self love, you know, I'm talking about um, the individual um, mm -hmm. really getting to know who they are. Yeah, and we already know that society, you know, programs every programs us, you know, to work. Um, that was how the industrial area was formed. Okay. That's why schools are formed so that everybody is uniform. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks I like that's why we wear school uniforms in school, mm -hmm. and we have the same kind of you know, like, and when you get out of school, you know, you get into the workplace, you know, and that uniformity, that uniformity continues. Exactly. Uh, so, so, yeah, um, if you really want to explore this life, if you really want to be who you are, if you really want to actualize um, the potential that you have, if you want to unpack the gates that nature has endowed um, in, in, in us, um, then the best, the first way, the beginning of everything is to love yourself, you know, for who you are, how you are, and, um, you know, for all your quirks and what, however, you know, mm -hmm. you don't even know how, I used to question, you know, the concept of, um, of beauty, you know, who came up with that idea, mm -hmm. who told us, that um, a particular image is beautiful and another image is ugly. Um, you know, where did those ideas come from? And, you know, and, <laughs> yeah, and we, we do this since we subconsciously believe, you know, because of television and mm. radio and media, um, that, they are, that they are kind of ideals to pursue. Meanwhile, what we're supposed to be doing is to look within ourselves yes uh because everything is inside um yeah but we, we are we're not taught that uh, exactly. we, we have been taught to compete you know right from primary school how am i going to be that you know i'm not doing well you know, you have to do better and all that um nobody no, focuses on itself. that's my definition of self-love and i think so that's self -love it is, is a practice of um well, every now. yeah it's a practice of um improving even if not to improve, um, of knowing, mm. basically, yeah, knowing who we are from mm. a very, very, very deep level. Excellent. That's a good answer. Okay, because you've covered for me the important ones of the uniform, the school, and all these different things where the self-love is taken away at a young age when you have to compete. So, no, thank you. Um, the next one we have slightly different shape, change, um, change of pace but this goes into your love thing because <laughs> the book is about true love is what is the importance you've got a chapter your soulmate and your best friend oh so, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so i'm not gonna let you off with the easy ones yeah <laughs> so um, your soulmate um, and your yeah. best friend how because you've got a chapter on that so how do you now, you know, bring that subject um, into this big debate? Because people have no understanding that you have to have your most important relationship with your best friend. That's yeah. why it lasts. But let me not use my words. Go on. Okay, yeah, I, I'm a very, I'm a strong, I'm a strong um, believer and advocate, um, you know, of of the fact that yeah. It's a fact that we're not here alone. Yes, um, yes we are individuals, um, but we are um, we are a network of souls. We are an ecology of souls, basically. Mm -hmm. And the way we have evolved now, um, you know, to the the reason why I talk about a best friend there, you know, is somebody that you can exchange ideas with. Yes. Um, somebody that will understand you for who you are. Mm -hmm. Somebody that can see you for who you are. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, so 
we try to, like how we, we we try to build a unit, mm -hmm. you know? and I believe in I I'm a strong believer in parallels. You know, uh, remember I've mentioned about the DNA, the man, yes, of course, male and female. Yeah, so it still extends the game. You know, there are always two sides to a coin. Um, uh, so we need a partner. Uh, let me say a partner in crime or something. <laughs> you call it a crime. Yeah, okay, go on. Yeah, that we can talk with. <laughs> Uh, because we have we have a voice for for communication, um, we have feelings, we have all that. So the the experience of life um, is best fulfilled when we share it with uh, one or more people. Yes. Um, yeah. But it's always closer when you have that second person around you. For the soulmate, there, um, the soulmate is somebody. Um, that are going to be sent to you, basically. Um, you're, you're going to meet them, you know, mm -hmm. in your life. Uh, it might not be just one person, yes. uh, but you're going to meet different people. I've met different people in my life um, at a point when, where, when I wasn't ready for this journey. Um, and they came in, they taught me a few things. Um, we parted ways, <laughs> you know. It happens, I still happens. feel their yeah. energy within me. Yes. Yeah. I can still feel the message that they came to teach me. That's right. And then when you're conscious um, of yourself, when you know where you're going to, um, that's when your eyes really open you know, mm -hmm. to see who the real soulmate that you're meant to journey with is. Um, yeah. So it's just two people. Basically, who are tired of suffering? Because <laughs> 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 yeah. the way I came okay, to no, wait, no. yeah, so, was just through a long process of suffering, okay. and heartbreaks, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, it got to a point when I, I just had to um, make a decision, you know, okay. not to continue with the suffering. Okay. And then my soulmate appeared. Yes. And I write it like that. And I, I've written like that on social media more than once over the years. Yeah. And I've gotten some, um, you know, feedback that, that tells me you know, that, you know, from which I can draw a temporary conclusion that maybe what I'm saying is right. I think you're on the right track. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, the next question is patience is needed. This chapter you put in there, and it's a favorite of mine because I realized that in evolution becomes that you're someone who now is less reactionary to events around you. You know that your um, reaction is going to impact the outcome of this situation. So when I, when I saw that, that you wrote a chapter on that, I just really wanted to hear your take on when it said patience is needed. Yeah, there's, there's no, like we can't even fight the, the patience. Um, if you look around the world and just look, just look around nature, you know things are happening at their own time. Yes. Um, yeah. We just I had I had my second baby, and we don't control the process basically. So there's really no option, you know, than to wait for it to happen. <laughs> and Go on. the more you struggle, you know, you give yourself more stress. Yes. Yeah. Basically, if you rush it, um, you're going to keep stressing. And life is going to keep hitting you, you know, uh, until you realize that there's really no need for that rush. Uh, so patience to me is one of the very key aspects of manifestation. Mm -hmm. um, depends on, on the, in the long-term vision of where you're going to and, and of what you want to achieve. Um, and also every day, you know, it's just doing, doing what you need to do every day with grace and ease and knowing that um, everything comes in, in divine timing. Okay. The problem with knowing that is that you now start expecting it. Yes. Uh, but the, the <laughs> you know, another key, you know, is that you're meant to let go of expectation. Mm. That's the quality, that's the paradox there. Um, yeah, so how do you let go of expectation? It's by keeping yourself busy yes. every day. Focusing on the day, focusing on the moment. You know, what do I need to do now? If you do that, you won't be thinking about 
the outcome uh, because I'm, I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing. So um, I, I like seeing small incremental you know, growth uh, than everything just coming at, <laughs> coming at once because I don't even know what to do with it. Look, they say you have to bite small bits at a time so your body can digest it properly. So I yeah, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm a very strong advocate of people um, waiting for their time. Waiting doesn't mean being docile. It doesn't mean that you're not getting, you, you'll be doing your work, you know, the work that you're meant to do. Mm. Um, the divine work that seems to be. Um, nice. But there's no rush to anywhere because we're not really doing anywhere as such. <laughs> no, we're not my friend and we can only live there's a saying that we have where they say life cannot be won it can only be played yeah play, I love that word yeah it's, I see that it dance you know? so there's really no like you know, there's no destination that you're doing no. yeah you're just dancing to the music you know, of, every day a new tune of our house. <laughs> yeah. a new tune thank you for that this one isn't so pleasant but it's in your book so i think uh, at this middle phase it's going to be the old thing where you travel through a bit more of your story um so that we can get why you came to that understanding and knowledge that you have so the next chapter here is the pains of abuse i'm sorry it sounds harsh but you've got a chapter there and i know that is speaking of a way in which you overcome this pattern that is inevitable in everyone's life, it would seem. Oh, okay. Um, my turn. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I was just okay. talking about the but yeah, the, so, yeah, the pains of abuse. You got a chapter. Pains yeah, of abuse. I wrote a chapter about the pains of abuse. Um, is I write, you know, from imagination. Okay. Sometimes. And um and also from the experiences of other people. Of course. And yeah, I've been in, um, in how would I put it? Yeah, in abusive relationships um, that not being, not a romantic relationship. Okay. Know, relationship with friends, relationship with, um, you know, family okay. and all that. So I was able to, you know, integrate it into what I was writing. Mm. And I've also been close to people that have been in real domestic abuse okay. uh, situations, uh, which I haven't been into, and I really don't have first-hand experience. Okay. Uh, but I have first-hand experience of um, narcissists and people that I know, you know, um, that were out to achieve in the world, and they will not. Um, they don't take any. Hostages, you know, they will, wow. they will, they will climb your head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you to where they are going to, you know. So they don't really see you as a human being. Okay. They, yeah, you know, they see you as a, how do I put it, like a step or something. You know, yes. Where they are going to. An obstacle and, in their way. Go an obstacle in their way. No, well, not really an obstacle. Sometimes you could be an asset, you know, so they will use you. Okay. Like material, um, you know, or production. So it means when yeah, then they will, <laughs> after using you, they will dump you and move on to their next project, which is the next person that, that, that they need to use. To okay. Work. Yeah. So, yeah, the pro the pro the problem of abuse, you know, is um, another reason why I wrote it. I so rampant, you know, social media. Everybody, I get a lot of you know calls. Um, I do some um, informal relationship coaching, and That's I found cool. out, That's you cool. know, that yeah. The problem uh, that most people, most people are going through is their intimate relationship with their partners, mm -hmm. and most of the most of the calls and whatever I get um, are from female yeah. members of the world, and that means that I mean I can just assume that um, most of the abuse is coming from the male. <laughs> uh, not <laughs> everyone would agree, but I understand. Uh, yeah, yeah, just I'm just saying, like in um, in numbers, you know, mm. and. It, it also tells why, you know, females, female, the female um, gender, you know, um, that's why there's a rise in feminism and all that. So I'm not just making it up. Um, oh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, we can see it in the politics of the world and mm. everything, you know, um, female inclusion uh, and all that, equality and everything mm. that, you know, 
So yeah, there is that abuse um, that comes from a lack of understanding, a lack of mm -hmm. empathy, a lack of um, connecting with our femininity, um, mm -hmm. a lack of um, of consciousness, basically. Uh, yeah. So which which <laughs> which I don't want to go very um, very deep inside. No, it's okay, but I yeah, guess it's an unconscious act that we it's an unconscious act that we do because we. We don't see people as human beings. We exactly. See them as, um, yeah. There's a different way you see somebody when you're not conscious. If you're conscious, you see the person as yeah. part of you. And, hmm. yeah. and treat them as you would like to be treated, isn't it? Exactly. Okay. Uh, this would help us in the next one that we're going to because you did a chapter on trust. So I know with men, trust is a big thing. Uh, you can lose a man's love, but to help him lose his trust in himself is a big thing to take away from him. So when, so when I saw this title, I had to include it in the chapters. I wanted you to express a little bit more trust. Yeah, yeah. Um, trust is the lifeblood of every relationship, mm -hmm. especially intimate ones and your close friends. Um, you can't have a friend um, that you don't trust. Thank you. Uh, that, that person is not uh, a true definition of a friend. Mm. Uh, my, my dad taught me that, you know, that the simple definition of a friend is somebody that you can trust. Mm. Um, somebody you can trust, you know, with your life and you know, with secrets. Mm. Um, Someone that you can be vulnerable with, someone that you can be open with, someone that you tell the truth. Um, that's what that's the level that trust comes in, and trust is something that builds over time. Yeah, um, it takes it's not, I mean, it takes years to build. Uh, so it's an expensive um, trait. You know, it's too expensive for for you to give it to just anybody. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't. I I listen to so many people, you know. I have plenty of acquaintances, um, but I only trust very few people. Yeah. In my life, and uh, very, 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 very few, like in single digits. Yeah. So yeah. So <laughs> so trust is something. Um, yeah. Is is uh, how do I put it? Is the that is the bond between uh, between friends. Yeah. Yeah, so hundred percent agree. Yeah, it's fulcrum of everything. No, that's why I wanted. To I don't make... trust. Yeah, if I don't trust that you're going, you're not going to do something. You know, I'm always going to be second guessing you. I'm always going to be tracking you. Know. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the next one, I think that leads into what you've just said. You wrote a chapter on communication. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, my friend, I'm thinking of the best ones. Go on. <laughs> well, the, the communication one um, is really very difficult, um, to be honest. Um, why communication is difficult? Because uh, I wrote this book before, before I got married. Okay. Um, so I really didn't have the full information on, um, from, from a marriage perspective of, you know, from living with somebody. Uh, but now I've been living with my wife for almost two, for two, three years or so now. Um, I've come to understand, you know, that communication is very difficult. Yes. Language is defective. Yes. Um, what you what you are saying and what you mean to say, you know, <laughs> is not what the next person is hearing. Of course not. That <laughs> only you. <laughs> They're hearing I'm very, they yeah, want to I'm very hear. clear. Even as we are discussing now, what I, I think I'm communicating may not even be what, what you are getting from what I'm saying. Because everybody has filters. Yes. Have their own special filters and yeah. you know, their own life experiences. So yeah. words mean different things to, di to different people. Even the simple word, uh, let's say I say, come here, good, you know, it can mean different things to different people. Somebody might see it as an insult. Yeah. Another person might see it as a command or, you know, another person might, might see it like, it's, it's, it's like that, really. And 
even though we live in the same house, you know, we always try to explain, even after we have talked and said, and said, what, we, and said what we are saying, you know, yeah. we still go deeper again to mm. explain to ourselves, you know, this is what I really mean. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just say that then? Why did you have to say something else? So, yeah, so <laughs> communication is, um, we take it for granted and, you know, we just say things and we expect that the other person understands it the way we understood it when we were saying it. And there's a breakdown in communication almost every single time. Almost every time there's a breakdown in communication. So that's why you need your soulmate around. Um, your soulmate is someone that can also understand energy. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't really, like, they can even feel you before you say what you're saying. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. That's, and, yeah, that's those are the chance, can, those yeah, are the Yeah. Words actually were just created to confuse. <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I have a saying that, um, how do you say, you speak with your tone, you just use your words to lie with. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, they're not that reliable as we think they are. No, uh, they're not. Uh, it's the tone of voice that everyone recognizes. But um, no, thank you. Because this again leads into the next one because you're building up this story and building up the book as we're going through. The next one is authenticity. That's the next chapter. <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, um, that's the... That's my central message. That's my message in life. Um, that's what I came to preach about. That's what I came to teach. Um, the power of authenticity. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the power of just um, trusting. Everything we've said before, like you said, the, the power of trusting your own self, trusting your inner wisdom, trusting um, your experiences, trusting what you have been through. Mm. Um, and being able, and having the courage you know, to, to express it and to teach it. The reason why I say to teach it is because, um, like I mentioned before, we were a community of, um, of souls and we're here to help each other out. Mm -hmm. um, so you cannot even live on your own and whatever gift you came with, whatever talents you have has to be shared yeah. with other people. Um, it can be shared through communication as we're doing now. Um, I've shared it a bit through this book I've written yeah. and we keep sharing, you know, in that way. So being authentic is really the only way to make, um, to make a meaningful life for yourself. Um, you can use it, um, in your spirituality. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you can also use it, you know, in the physical world to, to go anywhere you want to go. If you're authentic, you can um, like you can attract anything you want to attract. Yes. Um, because you're only going to attract who you are, basically. Mm. Um, not not the mask that we wear. So by being authentic, we are showing our true nature to the yeah. world, and any other spirit, any other soul that passing by, you know, can recognize you. You know, your the like-minded soul, your soulmate. Your soulmate cannot see you if you're wearing a mask. And, you know, of course, the right one won't come. They will just won't get exactly. they, will, they won't know you're there. <laughs> so, oh, so, yeah, so we have to take off the mask. We have to take off, um, we have to peel all those layers. You know. And, you know, and how do I put it now? This technology really is helping, um, although it has a lot of bad uh, sides too, but, but it's, uh, it helps us, you know, in the communication. Mm -hmm. Helping us to um, spread whatever message we came here with. So yeah, it's a very key aspect of uh, not key aspect. It is what I'm teaching. It's what I'm building myself to be. Um, it's what I'm trying to understand. It's what I'm trying to understand because self knowledge is about authenticity. Yes. And I, I think the how can I put it? The last bus stop, the final destination of all spiritual activity is just to be your authentic self. No, that's the end book. That's the end goal. Because that's all anyone really needs. That authentic confidence in yourself, as far as I'm concerned. So no, you put it perfectly. Uh, the next one, you've kind of touched on it, but now you can express it in a different way. Because you have a chapter towards the end of the book called Love Yourself. 
Oh yeah. Um, love yourself. I think I broke it down into three different ways. You know, loving your body mm -hmm. um, by uh, by watching the food that you eat and the food yeah. you drink to take into your system. Um, a lot of us have been eating unconsciously for years, um, not understanding how our own body and how our system works. Uh -huh. uh, so if you know that, then you, you, you first you will know, you will be aware. Awareness is the first step. Um, knowing what, what, it, what, what your cells need to uh -huh. function. Uh -huh. um, we have the internet, so we don't really need to get a group to teach us um, uh -huh. what nutrition we need to be taking. But I know it's difficult because our taste buds are already um, accustomed to sugar and all those drugs that we have. Uh -huh. That we were pumped with um, from childhood. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's it's a hard process to reverse um, what what they have told you. Well, I mean, what you believe is bitter. Yeah. And what you believe is sweet. And medicine is always bitter. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> but growing up, sweetness. <laughs> yeah, the medicine has always been bitter. I never had any sugar. So yeah. I've, I've I've just been I've been trying gradually to change my own kind of diet. Mm. Then. You need to love your mind too. Okay. Be careful of what you um, be careful of the information that you allow to infiltrate your mind. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what you feed your mind is very important. Um, feed it with positivity. Um, then you also look for. Then you try to use your mind rationally. Yes. And not let anybody's interpretation of what is happening. Um, dictate to you, you know, what is true or not. Yes. But you will know what is true from the inside of you. Yes. And you're not meant to suppress what you think is true just to please another person. Um, yeah. Then, of course, you need to love your soul or love your heart. You know, yes. Uh, by being kind to yourself, uh, by forgiving yourself mm -hmm. uh, for whatever mistakes. Because I'm sure we all made a lot of mistakes um, coming up you know, to yes. where we are. Um, a lot of us carry a lot of blame, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, and we have refused to um, to drop those things, um, to leave them behind where they belong. Yeah. Um, the reason for whatever pain we have been through um, is to teach us some lessons. So what we need to take from there are the lessons, um, not the baggage itself. Uh, so with, with with the lessons, you know, we can reinvent our present. And we can recreate um, our future. Okay, thank you. Um, and next one now, uh, or towards the end, we've only got two more left. As far as the book things are concerned, I got a few more things yeah. afterwards, but we're doing very well. Um, dealing with pressure. Uh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't going to let you off. <laughs> the last one, yeah. <laughs> Dealing with pressure, that's another chapter in the book. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. There was, for me, it's, it's, um, it's now, uh, how would I put it? Yeah, I'm able to use the past tense now um, for pressure because uh, I used to feel under the pressure of society, mm -hmm. um, societal expectations, um, family expectations, you know. You haven't married in time, you haven't done this in time, your mates are doing this, you haven't done it. And all that. Um, and that's a reality that so many people um, live by now. Um, yes, there's some pressure. The, uh, but you know, uh, how do I put it? Um, we all need some level of pressure for us to function. Yes. Physically. Uh, uh, like in life, we're, we're under the pressure of time. Um, uh, to do things, you have a span of you know, 70 to 100 if things do well, if there's no accident or whatever. Um, <laughs> we have that time pressure, it's not here. So, but the pressure now in relationship, mm. in um, there's a lot of pressure on women to, of course, you know, when it comes to relationships, uh, what society expects them to do. By certain ages, their biological clock also contributes to the to the pressure, you know, of, mm -hmm. yeah, people's other people's expectations of them. Um, 
I'm not saying that we uh, that we abandon every single expectation. Of course. But but the expectations need to be met with um, you know with common sense mm. and to fit our own reality. And if you decide not to even meet it, there's nothing wrong with that too. That's right. Uh, still your choice. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So yes, it, it, it's it's. It's your choice to either do it or not. Um, gone are the days, you know, before we used to fear exclusion from mm -hmm. the community and all that. Um, but in this information era, those things don't really exist again in this urbanized world that we live in. Um, people even just travel away and just abandon their families you know, forever. Exactly. <laughs> don't start that, don't start that. Yeah. <laughs> I do yeah, understand um, that. Yeah, people, yeah, people, just people want to know their story. names, change their surnames, uh, you know, like anything. So these are, how do I put it? These are pressures that we have, um, that we have carried over yeah. from the pre-industry, from the I don't know, from millions of years ago. Yes. When we we're living in tribes and communities and, and others. And we carry that, those cultures, you know, into uh -huh. the And it's putting a lot of pressure. It's, it's uh, yeah, I've seen something, somebody wrote that it's peer pressure from dead people or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. We're carrying a lot of pressure that you know, people that died long ago um, instituted. Yes. And those it's things, cultures, yeah. isn't it? They're the ones who built the culture and everyone's trying to maintain something that was viable hundreds of years ago. But in this information age, you can't do that anymore. Try to take away a phone from a child of 10 now. The child will be looking at you like, I want the phone. <laughs> it's like that. I love child of one. My daughter is 17 months old. And, um, when she's on the phone, you know, you can't... Um, when she's watching some things, you know, if it goes off, she starts screaming and all that. And <laughs> yeah, I'm just watching her. It's really funny um, how how they get attached to you know things. But that's not that's not that's not what we were discussing. So on the issue of pressure, okay. you know, people carry those pressures into their into their intimate relationships. Um, mm. It's it's a baggage, you know, that is not needed. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can start today. We only want this decision away from changing, uh, from changing our lives. Exactly. Um, yeah. What is the worst scenario? You know, what is the worst outcome possible? You know, if something doesn't happen or if it happens, nothing. Um, it's never really that bad. Uh, we 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 catastrophize a lot. Like we think we always believe that the worst is coming. We we believe that. Um, Something bad is always on. <laughs> it's on the horizon, isn't it's it? It's on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not true. No, it's not true. Okay, the last one, which is probably going to be the most, um, how do you say, uh, anticipated for those reading the book, is the divine feminine. This is a question that is asked by many, but not well explained by, by very few. So, my friend, please, uh, this is the last one as far as your book, but yeah. uh, the Divine Feminine, when we saw that, we went, whoa, <laughs> and we read it, and it went into a poetry um, of wisdom, explaining of things that the woman goes through, doesn't go through, how she is, all the different facets of her personality. So please, let me not steal your thunder, my brother. Uh, please explain from us what that is for you. Uh, yeah, for me, I believe the woman is divine. Um, I won't say it's superior to any to mm -hmm. male, but um, they have um, a very special um, capability. They are unique in the sense that they bring. Um, they um, how would I put it? They bring something. Um, something very powerful to life, which is the power of creation. Yes. Um, and I think we, we recognize this already, even as a people. Uh, we say Mother Earth, um, Mother Africa. Um, yeah, so anything that has to do with giving birth, in all the species, in every living being, is the female species that does that. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they are responsible, you know, for, for harboring, um, for, 
for creating. Exactly. In fact, they are the creators because it's within them that all the creation happens. Um, so that's why I put it, you know, as divine. And not and um, I, I mentioned some things about the biology, you know, um, the mitochondria that that, put, that provides the energy inside the cell mm. really removed from the female. Um, the female have um, how do I put it there? Yeah. They have two X chromosomes, you know, that are powerful, and one of the X chromosomes needs to be like they only use one, you know, mm. one half of their of their DNA. You know, because if they use if if the two are expressed at once, that's just how nature has evolved for them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, they would have been doubly powerful. Uh, so one is silence, and they are functioning with half of their you know mm. genetic capability. And this is what a lot of people don't really read, but I know it because I've studied biology and all that, so I, I understand it from a biological point of view. Thanks. And it was really um, fascinating for me when I was reading about it. Um, yeah, so nature su suppresses half of their powers, you know. <laughs> I'm grateful. <laughs> able to do. I'm grateful so that we have a yeah. chance. But yeah, yeah I'm able to do what they do. Um, and I, I won't lie to you from from anecdotal from anecdotal experience. That's from my own personal experience when I was coming up. Mm. I mean, the females in my class always seem to be more intelligent. Of and course, of course. I think so, yeah, because yeah. I mean, in every class, I will have like uh, like nine girls in the top 10 of the class, that, that, kind, of, that, that kind of thing. And, but when you get to the secondary school, uh, yeah, they are still very intelligent and everything. But when you do not get to the university, males seem to take over because that's yeah. when females need to get married. And, exactly. You know, right there from, from what they're supposed to do. And of, course. of course, after university, you don't even see them again in the workplace no. because, <laughs> because they have to have yeah, their kids. Do and, roles. It's not really yeah, so I feel so. that you know we're not tapping from half of the potential no. of the world. Um, there's a lot of wisdom that they carry that men are leaving behind. Uh, because we have the freedom, you know, to go into politics, to do this and do that and do this. So, but we need to develop. We need to develop an, a system, you know, where the woman's um, where the woman's pain, the woman's yeah. because I mean they've been through a lot of pain. Of course, they've been course. subjugated for so many you know, for millions of years, and they just got to start voting in the UK. Everybody knows about the uh, what was it called in the nineteen twenties or whatever. Yeah, when, they were, when women were allowed to vote. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it's not that long ago that we started to integrate them you know we have been using them as instruments of um, of giving birth or whatever yeah. <laughs> and that well, that's not how that's not that's how, not what they came here to do that's not what they came here to do no. um, don't, don't get me wrong it's what is part of what they do but as they yeah, say yeah, 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 part of what they do but it's not woman uh, makes her home come on <laughs> nah, no 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 doubt uh it's part of what they what they it's part of what they came to do but i still believe they have um um, a huge untapped um, oh, it, resources that we are not uh, getting value from. And wow. the pain that they even go through naturally, the pain of childbirth, I've been, yeah, when my wife was giving birth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and I, well, I wasn't feeling the pain, but um, I know from reading, reading up, you know, that that pain is not, not, what, it's not what you feel. Like it is, it's, 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 it, uh, it's an existential pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can laugh as men, but they don't find it. Yeah, fun. <laughs> yeah I, I'm understand. writing the second book called oh, "Excellent Wisdom of Pain." Excellent. And yeah, I didn't even think about this kind of pain that you know. Mm. Are bringing the, yeah. So, so yeah, the um, the, the, the divine feminine for me, you know, um, I was writing from my feminine side too. So, okay. Know, um, I, I was trying to paint a picture of somebody, you know, that has been destroyed and broken down, and who is trying to rise up, you know, from the ashes. Yeah, with strength, courage, uh, confidence, and all the other qualities that lead to uh, spiritual development. Excellent. 
Um, thank you so much. We're going to move on, but everyone, that's the breakdown of the book. You can see it's an amazing read and it goes into details that it's not your common day thinking. And he's just given you, we've just spoke about 10, there's 25 chapters equally as interesting. The book's on Amazon right now, so you can go pick it up. There's two different versions. I picked up the Kindle version myself, but you can get the paperback as well. Okay, um, but we're going to move on because more time recently you've been spent being this. I don't know if you like mind the word YouTuber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. Little, you're okay with that term, yes? Yeah, YouTuber. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Now, I started the YouTube page in uh, 2012 and I've been on and off. Um, I just, well, I didn't understand what YouTube was meant to be used for then. Okay. I just knew that I, had, I needed to have all the social media, so I created it at, along with Instagram and Twitter, or whatever, just to have all the social media. Then I, I started putting a few things there, and I left it for years. Um, I started working on it again, very consciously. I came back last year, around August, mm -hmm. so I did a few mm -hmm. videos. Of course, Stopped it, stopped again. I hadn't finished my PhD at then. Mm. I had to stop so I could concentrate and finish up, finish up my study. And yeah, so in June of this year, um, that was when I got the confirmation that I had uh, passed the PhD. Yes. And I decided that that was the, the next step for me now um, was to start making videos. Um, because I've been doing a, a lot of writing over mm. the years. I've been writing on Facebook um, for about five years, almost every single mm. day. That's um, right. Yeah, so it was already from it had already formed the kind of comfort zone, and and a, and a big believer, you know, in always pushing your, your limits. And the other reason why I decided to start is because I stuttered, I stammered for a very long time, you know, all through my life. So, really? Yeah. So I could not talk before. I was my God, before. no one would know. Okay. Yeah, so that was why. That that's part of the reason why. I am an observer. Okay. So I read people's body language because I was ashamed to talk. Because when, whenever I talk, I will stutter and people will laugh at me. Oh, wow. So I just couldn't talk. And now I'm going through the process, you know, of healing that part of myself. Okay. You know, and not just that, too. Um, the, the, the way, the two main ways of communication you know, it's through voice. Yeah. Through, um, yeah, not too many ways. Okay. Through writing, then there's also art. Yeah. That's, art that's more abstract. Um, yeah. So that, um, that's, uh, I don't know what, yeah. So that's, that, that's what triggered it. And I also want to keep, you know, a kind of diary or something that will be there, you know, when I'm gone, uh, where people can go and yeah. see what, you know, what is they had in his mind. Excellent. And yeah, I have a system that I'm using to do it. Um, I don't know what other question. Um, what, uh, what? Well, no, what I was going to ask you as well, because you do so many videos, like you're writing literally every day, yeah. you're doing a video, sometimes yeah. twice. But I wanted to find out what was your favorite type of subject, because you go through so many subjects. Is there a theme going through them? Or is there one that you enjoy talking about most? Because we know you have to fill every day with content, but there'll be something that is close to your heart, a subject that you really want to get out and have everyone understand when you're saying and doing your videos. Um, I would say I'm in, I'm in the process of discovering what it is. Okay. Um, yeah, so... I'm, I haven't even started talking about, um, you know, the business side of it. Okay. Yeah, so I, the way I envision the channel going is going to have um, a more personal, spiritual, you know, side and, okay. and a business um, aspect. Um, like I told, like I said in the beginning, mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in integrating my duality. Okay. Yeah, so... I'm going to be doing my business on the side. Oh no, like on one side it's going to be more academic business. Okay. And on the other side it's going to be the 
spiritual, personal development, psychology um, aspect. But yeah. So you're still going to give a range of different videos, but you're going to give you know um, the variety based on where your business mind is driven and where your love for all the other explanations. Because for me, if you love your business, you have the perfect life. Yeah, so the, the common theme, I think, from both of them is going to be authenticity. Because okay. the business... Be, that word. Yes, <laughs> Which is your true word. Go yeah, it's a spiritual business. It's not um, like, you know, still, it's a, it's a kind of spiritual business. You know, so mm -hmm. it's going to be authenticity. That's the key. That's what I'm, that's really what, that's really, that's the message I'm trying to bring out there. I do the videos, I do about two, uh, or three a day because I know that wow. consistency is what brings in um, viewers. And okay. I've been seeing the channel grow um, every day. I get one, two, one subscriber, two, three subscribers. You know? <laughs> but it's growing and I celebrate each one. Thanks. I know how long it took me to build the Facebook page um, to up to uh, almost 600,000 people now. Wow. So I'm, I'm using the same model the same system so mm. i've i've developed a model already that you know that i've been using to survive throughout life um i've been reversing failures all my okay. life that's basically what i've been doing i've been failing and rising up failing and rising up but then look you can only listen time now to analyze what i have been doing to survive those levels of failure because like this is very intense failure the last one i experienced you know i lost my job Okay. I lost all the money I had. Yeah. Uh, I was even owing money. I almost went to prison. Wow. I faced the magistrate court judge. Jeez. You know, so I was lying down in a, in a police detention cell. You get what I'm saying? Wow. Well, in the darkness there, I was just like, wow, this is how my life is going to end. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, no way. And I built it up again to where I am now. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, you know so I'm using that model now. I feel like I've finalized the model. Mm. Yeah, you know so I've used it in Facebook. Uh, it's worked. I'm taking it to YouTube. It's working, I think. And I'm I'm going to bring it into the business, the charity business I want to start. Excellent. And hopefully, it works, and then I can export it to the world. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, only a few more questions, but the big ones now. Um, we're going to ask you a little bit. You don't have to go too much detail, but you know, I was interested. I love that word philosophy. Yeah, because for me, that's the love of wisdom. So, how did you decide that in the end you were going to do a degree of philosophy? Because if there's any degree that I would want to do, it would be philosophy. <laughs> the love of wisdom, the love of that. So for me, how did that journey start with you where you saw that not only you did the degree, you did a doctrine in that concept. I mean, for many of us, we hear the word in African, Western, whatever philosophy, it doesn't matter to me. It's like, what does one do when one gets into that type of um, course, that kind of understanding? Oh, no, um, uh, sorry, I, I didn't study philosophy okay um but the meaning of a phd is um the ph there represents philosophy okay um, so it's a, it's a doctor of philosophy in any area that you should okay. investigate yeah so the, my own phd was in business oh okay in sorry innovation <laughs> management yeah so, okay. so it wasn't really philosophy but yeah you have to go through some courses of um philosophy before you start. You need, you need okay. to understand the philosophy of business, you need to understand the philosophy of research. Okay. And just basic things, yeah. So I didn't study. It wasn't the philosophy like that. Okay. Well, sorry, there's me taking a label and not knowing what it it's made of. Um, the last one, um, or not the last one, what is it? Um, the one before us, what is the journey of your spirituality? Because that theme runs through everything you do. There's only one more question after that, but the one penultimate one is the spirituality because um, you can see it there 
in everything you write, in everything you say. Uh, I know from experience that when someone writes as you do, it's almost like it can't be taught. It's like it's channeled. <laughs> the words come to your mind. You see them in your mind before you put them down. You feel them before you actually communicate them. Yeah. So, yeah, I was brought yeah. up. Um, I, I was brought up as a Christian. Okay. Um, yeah, and and um, yeah. So a lot of us a Christian went to the church. Um, but I don't know, you know, I've grown into like a one man band. Okay. Uh, over the years. I grew up in a town called Enugu in Nigeria. And um, we're a Christian community there, um, basically Anglican and Catholic. Mm. Uh, from, of course, the uh, colonial era. Of course. Uh, from those religions. And I believe, and you know, I studied, and my dad was a, to me, he was a very great thinker. Okay. Um, very great philosopher, as far as I'm concerned. And so I don't know if he's genetically um, inherited from him, mm. um, or if it was just the environment, because I was quite close to him, you know, that, um, that took my mind a bit to those places. So, it was just it's under circumstances um, that I try to make. I have always always been thinking about things, so I started to question the religion itself. Okay. I started to, try to question the religious teachers. I started to question the reason why we have to go to church on a Sunday. I started to ask, you know, what is Sunday? You know, those kind of questions that uh, most people don't. Uh, <laughs> no, no, they don't they don't ask. They don't ask. And I wasn't getting any and yeah, and I wasn't getting any answers from, from anybody. So I started reading the Bible for myself. I read it over, over five times after you know. Wow. And there's, there's there's no better time to understand the Bible, you know, than when you're coming out of deep suffering. Yeah. Um, because that's when uh, that's when your spirit is awake. Yeah. And you know, you read it in spirit and in truth. Uh, so I've read it in spirit and in truth, you know, about three times. Always when, you know, when I felt that my life was about to, you know, get destroyed, it was always like the hope I could hang on. And what I could draw from it, you know, is not exactly what I see happening you know, okay. in the community. So I decided to be a practicing Christian, <laughs> rather than a church going. I understand. You understand what I'm saying, right? I understand. I understand. Yeah. yeah. So the church from, is not yeah, so, people. It's not. It's yeah. So not, I just forgot about all the try, uh, we go every Sunday. This, hmm. this, and I, I, I don't do all that. I never, I never even did that. You know. Okay. So I just started following the teachings, you know, of Ezekiel, Jesus. Okay. Of, then I, uh, when I came over here. Because then there was no internet or so, so even okay. I didn't know there was any other kind of teaching. I didn't know anything about Buddhism or whatever. You know, they were all termed as pagan, devil worship. Yes, of course. Um, occultic um, mm. things. Uh, so, but when I got in touch with the internet, you know, I started seeing similarities in everything, mm. and I under just I you know over years I now understood that everything is actually connected. Exactly. We want. Well, you know, it's just one spirit that we're all talking about. That's right. And <laughs> it's true. And, and, and that spirit is in us. Exactly. That's why you close your eyes to pray. <laughs> to <look laughs> yeah. Inside yourself. Yeah. So, so I really got, and yeah, yeah. So what really pushed me more, you know, deeper was, you know, the suffering, like, like I mentioned earlier. Mm. Um, I've been through about four major suffering. Um, and and each time I came out, you know, I always went back because I wasn't in the environment, you know, to, to keep me steady. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I was just in the, I was in the same environment. So mm. whenever I rise up, I start seeing the same people again, and it gets tiring. There's nobody to discuss it with. There's no. Mm. Um, there's nobody that nobody even thinks like that. Yeah. So I started. So I had to suppress, you know, all the. Questions and all the knowledge I think mm. I had then, and I'm just beginning to express um, what I know. Okay. Through my writings. 
Well, I'm grateful that you're doing it. Um, to finish off on your writings, um, your book and everything like that, and your videos, um, for me, what seems to be the most common theme for our everything you do is love. The book is called True Love. The, I see love, 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 love. Everything is love. So what is your reason for trying to push that? I know you push authenticity, but everything I keep seeing is love, 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 love. Yeah? yeah. If you can break it down. Yeah. Because I, it's, um, I put love, you know, on, on a higher pedestal than authenticity. Okay. Um, even in the Bible, you know, it's written that God is love. Mm. Um, so, so sure. creation, <laughs> creation basically is, is love. It? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so we are here to um, to love each other, and we know, you know, very like you know, how I put it, a mother's love for a child mm. is the beginning. Um, we, we, um, <laughs> most of us, you know, hopefully are products, you know, of love. Yeah. Um, it's difficult to explain what, uh, what lo love has so many dimensions. It's not just oh, one thing. Uh, yeah, but I see love as, as, um, as a unifying factor, mm -hmm. um, you know, of the world. Mm -hmm. It's more of a temporary thing. It's something that is thought. It doesn't come naturally. Okay. But, uh, it doesn't. I I I have um, a baby, you know, and I can see that it doesn't come naturally. Okay. <laughs> yes. And you don't really have to teach. Like you know, love comes naturally. With of course. You always want to help. You want to be you know of help to people, um, and all that. So that, that's why I teach about it. Okay. I know uh, for a fact that um, the system that we have created, that the, the human has um, created, the economic system of comparison and um, competition, and other may not allow you know what we call love to flourish. Yeah. Um, so that's why there's uh, heavy inequalities. Yes. In a world of so much abundance. Exactly. People are made to pay huge sums of money for food and all that, you know. And no other animal species does that. Um, animals don't need clothes, my friend. Animals, animals. don't need clothes. Go yeah, they don't, they don't use money, they don't do what they exactly. do. Um, they share. Exactly. So, well, but we, you know, we are decided to do competition between this country and that country, you know, sanctions and this and that, you know, who is richer and who is poorer. Um, it's just uh, I, I don't know, but I uh, but we have seen you know with the with the coronavirus and the COVID that, that, that came around that in the end all those things don't even matter. No. Um, the most important people now are the carers, um, the doctors, the healers, um, the the people that sell food. They are the only shop that will open for long for you know long for every other shop. Every other every other shop was shut down. Every other business you know was closed down. Apart from food, that's our food. So um, we are beginning to see, you know, the real importance. Every other thing is meaningless. Uh, come to work by seven o'clock, or you It's just what we don't do anything. Quarterly, whatever, um, annual report, all those things. Nobody does it again. It doesn't exist. Um, so the bare bones of survival, you know, depends on um, on each person helping the other. Thank you. Yeah, that's what we are seeing now. And it always takes a crisis, you know, like I told you about my own life. Of course. It's a crisis for me, you know, to, to respect myself yeah. and to look in what to know myself. So I hope that the world is going to use this period, you know, to actually um, to reorganize how we, are, um, how we do things and to understand how fragile and vulnerable we are in yeah. the world. And to understand that you know the love also extends to anim to animals, um, to plants, yeah. to you know everybody. And because who knows, 
it could be the the, um, the Amazon forest that they are destroying every day. You know, mm -hmm. that, you know, nobody knows, you know, because we are disturbing um, other species, you know, with our technology and our so-called um, you know technology. Mm. So we go and chop down. We we call them because you know we call them trees um, that we're using for wood or whatever. And these are this is these are houses. Um, exactly. Yeah, these are um, living beings of their own mm. house. Um, you know, birds and the rest of them. And even the tree itself is not say living being. Um, they were, they were, they have been on this earth before us. Of course. And yes, so it's, they are just basically fighting back. You know, and, you know, and now you know, we know, now we understand that we're not more powerful than uh, exactly the nature. Exactly, yeah. nature yeah. is still the king and the creator. Yeah, nature is still the king and the creator. So and the queen is everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah nature is still is still. Um, nature still controls everything. So, exactly. Yeah. So, we, so going forward, you know, we need to watch our relationship with nature, and you know, show that respect uh, to each other. Um, so, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're very, very, you're very correct in that aspect. Authenticity for me, you know, was for the individual. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, but on a more collective level, um, the message is love. Excellent. <laughs> My friend, um, we're left at the end. And in yeah. honesty, if there's anything you want to say regarding your book, regarding your new book, regarding your YouTubing or your coaching, uh, all of these things you do. And again, it's your, um, you don't need to be shy. <laughs> say where they can come and find you, where they can come and get these things so that they can actually start to invest in the journey that you've made and also um, learn. Because someone who overcomes adversity, I always say never to ask advice for someone that has it all. Ask advice or who was born into all of that. Ask advice from someone who had to work for it because they can give you steps that the person that was born with it doesn't know. So All right. Please. Uh, okay, yeah, thank you. This is my book. Uh, I'm not showing very clear. But this, this is The Art of True Love. Um, you can get it on Amazon. It's only available on Amazon. So you get uh, you can get the hard copy or you can get the ebook, the Kindle copy of it to support my my journey my, and my business um, and also you're going to get a lot of value from it um i write from experience i write from my pain especially um i write from my suffering because i don't want to waste even one drop of suffering um then i also write from my successes um yeah for which we do not which we do not really go into um, yeah so that's how you can support the book project. I'm writing a second book. Hopefully, I should be um, it should be published by before the end of the year, um, and I'll let you guys know. I'll drop the link to this one first. Um, yeah, then you can follow me on um, all my social media handles have the same name, Uchenna Ilu. Um, it's just the Facebook. Um, Page that has Uchenna Ilo coaching. Um, but if you just type in Uchenna Ilo, I've done a lot of work on social media over the years. I'm sure my name is going to be the first that um, pops up there. So you can follow what I do from there. Um, I'm looking for subscribers for my YouTube channel. <laughs> Keep it real. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for subscribers uh, for my YouTube channel. So I'll be, I will appreciate it if you can. Um, subscribe to my channel. I make two to three videos a day, and you can just pop in and listen to anyone um, that catches your interest there. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, Chair, thank you so much. Uh, you've been a wonderful uh, guest today. Uh, we are going to be doing some more of these videos in times to come. My name is uh, Edison Banji of Ancestral Essence. And again, I really want to thank Dr. Echeno Ilo for sharing with us this hour that he spent with us today. It's been very informative 
and I've seen you from a side that I didn't know. And I'm very grateful. Okay. Thank you very much for having me on. No problem. Thank you, everyone who watched this. And please have a great day. Thank you.